everybody. Welcome to this meeting, Town Council Finance and General Purposes Committee. Can I just check with you, please, Dean? Is everything up and running for uh, the live stream? It is, Chairman. Thank you very much. I can hear a conversation going on in the background. So this should be a good opportunity for me to ask members, having welcomed you to the meeting, could you please make sure that your microphones are switched off and are only switched on if you need to make a contribution to the meeting. Usually that would happen by invitation, but you will need to uh, let me know if you wish to speak. Um, I am unfortunately only signed in as a guest, so I can't use the interactive uh, facilities on this meeting so it may be that if you get the opportunity please just speak up tell me who you are and myself and Dean will keep a record to make sure that we don't miss anyone who wishes to contribute to the meeting. Um, has Jane been able to get into the meeting Dean? Uh, yes Stuart. Stuart I have can you hear me? Thank you very much welcome. Yeah, sorry I'm doing it on my phone so it's not as good as it could be but it's not um, I'm not receiving emails, it seems, from RTC at the moment, so I don't know quite what's happening, but I'll speak to Dean about it. Thanks. Okay. So if we could then, uh, having uh, mentioned the preambles, apart from Jane, who's going to log in, and others who may be using their phones to log in, if you could make sure that ordinarily your phones are switched off and not used to make calls during the course of the meeting, so we have as few disturbances as possible and if there are members of the public watching may i welcome you also to this meeting of the finance and general purposes committee of ramsgate town council it is the 28th of april 2021 and it is 103 the agenda items proper then number one do we have any apologies for absence yes chairman Councillor Young and Councillor Christensen um, have advised us. Councillor Young may come in. She has been unwell, so um, she's not sure she'll feel well enough to attend. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, can I um, also mention Councillor Linda Piper? Um, as members will know, all members are automatically members of all committees, uh, but on committees such as this, at least one member needs to be absent. So. I asked Councillor Linda Piper not to attend and sit this one out to ensure that there was at least one person missing. Um, and in fact, to be fair, she's celebrating our daughter's birthday with her. So apologies from Linda. Uh, decorations of interest, item number two. Are there any decorations of interest from members concerning these agenda items? I'm not seeing any hands raised or anything like that, so I'll take that to be that there aren't any. Agenda item number three, uh, to approve the minutes of the meeting held on Wednesday the 27th of January 21. Uh, do members have any uh, questions or comments they wish to make regarding the minutes? No. I can't see anybody doing so to do. Um, certainly I was present at that meeting. I'm quite happy to propose from the chair, if that's appropriate, that the minutes be accepted as a true record. Can I have a seconder, please? Seconder, Chair. Thank you very much, Councillor Green. The minutes being proposed and seconded. Thank you very much. Agenda item number four are the accounts for the first and second quarters of 2020 and 2021. And I think this is over to our Deputy Town Clerk, if you would please. To Thank you, Chairman. Apologies, uh, members. Um, the accounts are actually for the, the last quarter of um, financial year 2020-21. These, these are the final count, accounts and the next um, part of the process to close down the accounts for that, year, for that financial year is that the internal auditor will attend uh, around the 17th of May, I believe, and then I will have to submit the annual return after it's been to council 
um, to the external auditors. So this basically breaks down um, the spending of the council throughout the last financial year. There have been underspends, uh, for example, the events budget is underspent um, due to COVID, um, obviously event, events couldn't um, take place. So the spending there was has only been um, just a fraction over 30,000 of 72,500. However, I think um, it's just sitting in the coffers basically, and we may need to draw on that if um, we have a, a splurge of events coming through, if you know we op open up and everything. So that's an underspend. I have to I have um, to reclaim VAT, which will come in uh, in the next financial or this current financial year of uh, just a fraction over twenty seven thousand eight hundred pounds. Um, so we, we don't pay VAT. So that will be coming back. Um, so uh, the preset came in as it should at nine hundred and forty one thousand and three pounds. Um, we received the VAT refund for the year before. I, it's funny because I work in like three years on the accounts. Um, so for 2019-2020, uh, we received a fraction over 51,500 in VAT. And that, that shows the difference between the two years with COVID kicking in as obviously our spending dropped because of that. Um, allotment tenants, the uh, income has... Uh, vastly improved over the last financial year because uh, most tenants are using backs to pay now and the payments are coming in much faster and the income was just over um, 19,000 with the spending being um, 15,400. So basically the allotments balance themselves out. It, it's it's quite good that we make no profit on the allotments. Um, everything is paid, goes back in. Um, I'm not sure if any members want to ask any questions on the document that I submitted for you um, at all. Um, the council itself spent, going back to COVID, um, £9,166.55 of its own uh, money on the COVID support supporting the food banks. Um, but we did receive some money coming in to help with that. Um, a gentleman, um, from the public sent four lots of £100, so he, he contributed £400 towards it and we received KCC Members Fund um, grant as well towards that, that helped us a lot and we su supported the various food banks in uh, Ramsgate. Um, I don't know if anyone wants to ask any questions on the last financial year. Chair? Uh, yes, Councillor Green. The, the KCC members grant, did that come from both of our KCC councillors? Uh, councillor, that came from Councillor Constantine. Constantine? Constantine, yeah, no, just the one. Thank you. Thank you for that, Councillor Green. Chair, question. Yes, Councillor Rizeki. Yeah, it says in there that 10,000 went to the judicial review. I thought that was 5,000 with another 5,000 if required, if they didn't make their amount. I thought they had made their amount. Having said that, uh, costs were awarded at the judicial review. Can we confirm that this money is coming back to the council, please? Um, sorry, councillor, I cannot confirm that. I don't know if the town clerk can clarify. Thank you. Uh, neither can I, I'm afraid. Uh, the fact of the matter, the, the matter is still in hands because they're still awaiting and the possibility of the Secretary of State actually reissuing the uh, development consent order, in which case there will be a further judicial review, I presume. I don't know. I would imagine that's what will happen. And so therefore the money is waiting, still waiting there to do that. The Secretary of State, held, I think, still has about a month to go before he must do something unless he can kick the ball further on up into the long grass. Um, but that's as far as it goes. If in theory, um the the matter is resolved there and then and the matter is one way or the other and there is no judicial review then yes then the council probably will be getting uh, some of its money back but that's speculation i i can't say for sure okay thank you town clerk thank you very much town clerk for that um can i just point out an obvious little typo um please um Deputy Town Clerk, 10, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 
judicial review. I think that's meant to read 10,000. It is indeed, Chairman. Thank you for noticing. At least you've okay. read it. Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah, OK. As long as we're remaining on, on top of this situation, it is perhaps a moot point, I'm not sure, but the judicial review, review for which the resolution was passed is finished. Any other, any other judicial review, review would be, of course, a new one. It just might be tidier accounting to retrieve any monies that should be coming back and then start the process again if necessary. But that, that's just a, a comment from me just to keep the paperwork straight. Are there any other questions to do with the Deputy Town Clerk's report for this agenda item? Okay, I'm not seeing any signs. I'm assuming you can't see any either, Dean. So thank you, members, for that. Can we please note the Deputy Town Clerk's report? I have an apology to make, members. I should have done this after the apologies. Uh, this, this committee, along with a couple of others, actually, are missing a vice chairman appointment. And I realize that it could well only be for one meeting. But um, again, to keep the paperwork straight, um, I've had a look at the vacant seat for vice chair for this committee. Um, I have had a word with a couple of members and notably spoke with Councillor Becky Wing, who was prepared, if council uh, could approve it today, to take the seat, albeit just for one meeting, just in case um, I choke on a chicken bun or something and she needs to take over the meeting this evening. Uh, but on a serious note, can I ask members, obviously the positions of vice chair have to be approved at the next available meeting of the committee. This is the first committee since our friend and colleague passed away. Um, can I ask members um, if we can approve uh, Councillor Becky Wing as the vice chairman of finance and general purposes until such times as we meet, probably the uh, annual uh, town council meeting when the chairs will be sorted out again. Are there any comments from members, please? I'll second or that. You, you, chair. Thank you, Councillor Rizeki. Are there any other suggestions? Members, with your permission, then I would like to thank Councillor Becky Wing for being prepared to act as vice chairman of this committee. Um, until such times as that changes. Uh, Councillor Wing, thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Chair. I'm uh, happy to stand in temporarily. There, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, there is a second part to uh, agenda item number four, which is the information leaflet to do with uh, the CALC. Do you uh, want membership, me to the fee, the you fees that we pay. Would you just run through that for us, yeah. please? Of course. Uh, um, thank you. Um, the council, since its uh, beginning, has been a member of CALC, which is the Kent Association of Local Councils. It's, um, it's to serve us, officers and members. It's a training provider. Um, they uh, are a source of technical and legal advice. Um, source of knowledge and experience, guidance. Uh, they're a professional support unit and uh, basically a forum for sharing ideas, concerns and resources. Um, they do provide training both for officers and members. So if you want training, please let us know and we can find out. The annual fee this time around is £2,706.34. Basically, all I need from you is to agree that we continue as members of CALC. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any comments from members? No, propose that we do, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Green. Can I have a seconder, please? Yeah, I'll second that, Chair, Councillor Alban, yeah. Thank you, Councillor Alban. Are there any objections from members? I can't see any. Uh, thank you very much, members. That, that then is uh, noted and agreed. I think we're well served by CALC and also by NALC. Um, when the when the needs arise, uh, but thank you for that report, Deputy Town Clerk. Um, the next item is agenda item number five: design competition for a gate at the entrance to Harbour Street. 
Um, could I turn to the town clerk for his report then? And there are two pages to this uh, agenda item, members, one of them showing pictures and a description of the social media post for the gate design competition that you might want to have a look at. Town clerk, please. Um, finally, after eight years, we've managed to get to the position where KCC do not object to the gate being fitted. I have to make sure that TDC don't go and dig it up again um, because there's a future high street fund um, scheme going on at the same time. And I think Jack butts right onto it. So I'm trying to get from TDC that they wouldn't do that. I could just do it under, because it's 250 quid, I could just do it under the delegated powers that the council's given me, but I felt it was better for the council to directly participate in this and to, to encourage um, artists and designers to come up with a, uh, with designs because we could just build a, a simple steel frame gate um, but I felt it, the, the the street deserves something better so it's got to carry out a functional it's got to carry out a, a, a you know a core function which is to keep out um, unauthorized traffic and for that it needs to be pretty um, secure it needs to be pretty substantial and robust but it also is in within a conservation area and there is enough problems in the town centre without actually putting something so ugly that it actually deters people from coming in. So what we've got to do is to encourage people to come in, but deter those with motor vehicles on the current time. So I'm proposing, or my proposal was, via, with, with the aid of the uh, town promoter, to come up and ask artists, designers, oh. anybody really, to come up with various designs and then you as the council can set up a panel and go through all the designs and decide which one is which. The other thing is I would also suggest you get um, uh, Climagate or one of the manufacturers to actually have a look at it to see if it's possible to make the thing because it's all very well having a wonderful design, but if it can't be made, you've had it. You know, So there we are. That's as simple as that. Thank you, Town Clerk. We note the dimensions and the suggestions you've made uh, on that report. Uh, mm -hmm. I wonder, is it uh, is it worth us mentioning to those who might want to join in and submit a design, something along the seafaring theme, which is Ramsgate? Um, and we've got the 200th anniversary celebrations coming up uh, next year. Anything along those lines to do with the harbour and so on? to be incorporated in the design? I don't know. But members, do you have any comments or questions to make uh, regarding this proposed gate? Yes. Just, in, just in regard to the TDC scheme that the town clerk mentioned, Yes, I, I've had a look at the plans for that, and their intervention seems to end quite considerably nearer to, the, to Harbour Street um sorry to help a parade rather uh than anything that would interfere with the proposed position for the gate thank you chairman if i may come in Councillor yes, yes please uh chair I, I think it's a great idea to get uh, local artists involved um you know it's something for the community to do um i don't really mind what it's what it's uh what it what it is so long as it's not knitted that's all i would say. <laughs> thank you can i just speak yes please uh, thank you thanks steve I, I would agree with you i think it's quite an exciting prospect actually to have a beautifully designed gate um, but how are we going to promote the design aspect of this? How do to encourage people to compete? I mean, um, perhaps Rebecca knows. I mean, where are we going to be advertising this, Rebecca, so that people are aware of um, how they can enter the competition? Um, on page two, members of this presentation, if you're able to pull it up on your screens, there's um, some information there about how people can make yeah. contact. Um, and hopefully, if we can get that out in the, um, has it gone into the next edition of the magazine, Dean? Do we know? Or was it have been premature to put it in the magazine before this meeting had discussed it? That, that's correct, Chairman. It was uh, just slightly premature. 
Okay. Are there answers on there? Are there sufficient answers on that page for us to know that the intention is to promote it as much as we can? Um, we could, of course, get the schools involved directly, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but through, um, through town promotion. That's what I meant, actually. Yeah. Yes. I don't know what the plans are. Sorry, Rebecca, are you? Um, well, just to say that it will generally be through social media. Yeah. yeah. Um, we'll we'll promote it on various group pages, um, including obviously Ramsgate Creatives. Um, I think it would be nice if we got a, a professional designer interested, and there are quite a lot of our professional designers that are very community community orientated. So hopefully that will happen, but. The idea was to keep it fairly general, just giving them a nod that this is in a conservation area um, and we mentioned about obviously being a maritime and a royal harbour and it could be that, as uh, Stuart said, something that's commemorative, has 18, 20, 21 to 20, 21, but it, or it could have something just welcome to our town centre. Um, but I think keeping it fairly open allows people to hopefully interpret what they think would look nice. Um, and we'll have suitable judges, including the fabricators, because the last thing we want is something that's completely un unfabricatable. I've just made that word up. <laughs> well done. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, in fact, I, to be honest, I, I've used Climagate before uh, for personal stuff around the house. Very, very good film. Very good local film. Um, yeah, Councillor Wing here. I hope we've, we've got an incredible talent pool amongst our young people as well. So, you know, we mustn't write young people off because they are the future. I'd rather see a young person's design than one of our highly paid artists. <laughs> Thank you for that, Councillor Wing. Um, the only thing that concerned me a little bit on this report is that it says the closing day for entries would be the 4th of May, which is only next week, which doesn't actually give us that long. Uh, is the intention to give them a little bit longer? Um, shall I answer that? If you would, please. Uh, yes, I, I wrote that um, a week and a half, two weeks ago, but... Uh, we decided that it would be best if it came to this meeting and we okay. you know we, so the dates will be adjusted there's um i think it also mentions it'll be one gate where i think the decision is it will be two so there'll be it'll open out on both sides okay. um so there's a few things that need to be adjusted since i wrote that report chair yes Councillor Green. um on I've lost you, Catherine. You're muted, David. You, you, you really have to make a choice. Uh, either you go for serious designers or you go for members of the public stroke children. Um, serious designers generally won't participate in the second uh strand so what i would suggest and i like becky's idea of um putting it out to school kids um to get ideas and then having selected a couple of ideas you then go to to the more serious designers to to develop that sounds very reasonable thank you councillor green Jerry, it would be nice to see if we were to select a young person, attaching that young person to a serious designer and there being some sort of learning and engagement between the two. It might just trigger the young person into something that they didn't think they were capable of. Indeed. Thank, thank you for that. Any other, other members wish to comment on, on this item? I'm trying to fill up the other pages. Excuse me a second. Yeah, I've got it now. 
Thank you for all those comments. I, I think um, we are asked to decide whether to proceed with the idea of putting the gate there via um, a method of seeking the right design, knowing that there are going to be a couple of adjustments to the design. It's, for example, as Rebecca just mentioned, it's now looking at two gates instead of one rather big one. Obviously, maneuverability of two small gates would be easier as well. Um, if there are no more comments that members... Sorry, who was that? <coughs> okay. If there are no more comments that members would like to make, can I have a proposal that includes the method of getting the design and the decision to, uh, uh, the decision to go ahead and the method of getting the design please Becky, okay sorry, perhaps chair. from there yep chair Cancel um, yeah I, I thought becky might have wanted to propose it as, as she's come up with that idea about the the school children um, I think it's a great idea, and I support what 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 David has said as well. Um, so um, I would propose that we go forward with this um, as a, a two part gate with um, design to come from um, children's schools for children within school to come forward with that and subsequently the winner of that will then go forward with a designer who we could then uh, and as and as councillor wing said uh, which i thought was a fantastic idea was for the the child uh, to work alongside with a design professional um, and i will fully support that chair uh, thank you councillor Alderman. um is that enough, Chair? Yeah, you got that, Deputy Town Clerk? Is yes, it, uh, have yes, you, Chairman, I've got all that. Thank you very much. Councillor Wing, are you happy to second yeah. that proposal? Yeah, I am. Maybe we need to insert somewhere that the gate needs to reflect our heritage. So that could, in, it could, our heritage and, I don't know, heritage, it could be seafaring heritage, our, our, our I don't know, if, if we put the word in heritage, does that make any sense? I don't know. So yeah, so yeah, so that a two-part gate, initially designed by young people, that yeah. reflects our heritage. Chair, the, um, I'm happy. Chair, I'm happy to in, include. Um, I'm happy to include that chair within the. Thank you. Proposal. Thank you. Both. Thank um, you. Both. Members, any other comments about the proposal? Anybody object to the proposal? Thank you. I'm not seeing any signs. Um, uh, the committee's decision then is that we proceed along the route outlined by Councillor Alban and Councillor Wing. Thank you very much. Item number six on our agenda. A reviving Ramsgate market. We now ask the town clerk to give us a, an up-to-date report as, as much as he is able to about Ramsgate Market. Town Clerk, please. Last autumn, I met with Rebecca, um, Rob Large, the uh, interim director of uh, estates at TDC, and it was decided then that they would, uh, they would intended to, uh, in the early part of the year, January, they would, that they would call for interest in the, um, uh, in running a market and they would then take it from there they would lay out a a proposal um or prospectus and get uh, and, and then get people to to uh, bid for it um none of that's happened yet i don't know why i i have seen emails to the effect that covid has somehow changed that i don't quite follow that one because uh, you can prepare for something without actually getting involved in it and I think they could have then just had the market operator already in place. And as soon as market, the market could operate in the place it's always operated, which is an eye street, they could say, well, there we are. Here's our market operator. Where you go. 
well, they haven't done it that way. Um, I put in a report suggesting that we could use um, Charlotte Court as an interim or even as the market if they don't do something. But I am informed, uh, I think I've seen a telling of, a, of an email that uh, I think estates, TDC estates may well be doing something, I think, sometime in the beginning of May. How long it will take them to do it, I don't know. Um, so um, perhaps Councillor Alban might know, but um, they uh, they haven't informed me about it. So I assume that's what I hope that if they are, then you don't need to do Charlotte Court. But if you don't think they are, then the Charlotte Court option remains open to you. Thank you very much, Town Clerk. You read my mind. I was going to ask uh, Councillor Alban if you are party to any very recent information that might help us. Oh, it's all secret, Chair. No, um, <laughs> no what I can say is uh, Richard's, uh, the town clerk is right. Um, part of what I will use in inverted commas excuse, uh, because I've also been chasing this up uh, to try and get the market back as soon as possible, because I think it's, it's certainly important for the town, certainly important for the local residents who live within uh the sense the center of the town um especially because, and especially for the uh, the older residents of the town because they do love the market um so it's important that we have it um now i as i said i have uh, chased this up um part of the reasoning behind not doing it was the covid issue now i don't know how uh fair that is um i'm not sure the town clerk's uh, comments were actually fair um i do believe it, it did have a an issue on it and also what did have an issue over over it was the lack of the staff that is available to to carry out this um that being said chair um i th i think ramsgate town council has uh has we could effectively um, get a market from Ramsgate Town Council within Charlotte Square, if if that is what members if what mem members want, um, and and that could also that could be uh, I don't know it could be a different kind of market it could be it doesn't have to be held on a Friday or a Saturday it could be on a Wednesday or w whatever it may be, so Ramsgate Town Council if it wishes could decide that it wants to. Um, have its own market um, and that could easily run alongside um, what Thanet District Council will do. Um, I'm sure, as Richard has said, uh, the, the, the Thanet District Council market provision is moving forward. We've had uh, the Chief Executive of Thanet District Council has assured, has assured me, has assured Cabinet because Cabinet has asked for this to take place. Uh, that, that that this is moving. So I can advise members of RTC uh, that Thanet District Council is moving on this process. And as Rich, as the town clerk said, I don't know how long this, that this will take because obviously there would need to be a uh, a due process for um, bids to be put in. Um, so that then has to go through that process. Um, that's as far as I can tell you, Chair. Thank you very much for that, members. Chair. Yes, Councillor Green. You've muted yourself again, David. Sorry, these are two separate issues, I think, like Councillor Alvin said. It, um, as far as the PC market is concerned, I think I saw communication from the Deputy Town Clerk that had a schedule for what for what they intend to do, um, which looked to me as though it's probably eight months before they'll be appointed a market market operator, um, which is good, but is a bit slow for for our purposes if we want to boost trade um, when the shops open. <laughs> In the meantime, I agree with Councillor Alban that, that, that this council 
should press ahead with the plans, which are quite well developed now, for the Charlotte Court um, market. Um, I guess the, the next thing we would need to do there is to find out from TDC whether it would be legal, whether there'd be any objections and what hoops we would need to jump through. So I would suggest that we, this council goes ahead with that. Thank you very much. Just quickly on that point, uh, Town Clerk, please. Um, if we push ahead in a sense with an interim idea to work through Charlotte Court, are we going to be able to satisfy TDC about the legality of what we're doing? That's what I think. It's one of our, sorry. Um, it's one of our powers that we have the right to run a market if we want to. The land belongs to us anyway. I just think it would probably be a good idea to work with Thanet District Council and say, look, we can't wait for eight months, but why don't we do this? Why don't you, why don't we run this, this market as an, a, a start this market at Charlotte Court? You go and do your due diligence and your procurement on, or whatever, your process on your, on the market in the high street. Um, but in the meantime, the, the town gets a market. Um, if later on uh, you decide to not hold it on a Friday but do it on other days, it can, it can morph into a different kind of um, uh, a market complementary to the, to, the, to, the, to the one that the Thanet District Council will be doing. If, on the other hand, they don't get any interest and this market takes off, then you can always say, we well, can always transfer it into the, uh, into the town centre and we can then go through all the necessary checks and balances that, that uh, TDC will want to do. I think just a letter to TDC suggesting this to them mm -hmm. and see what they come up with. If they make um, violent objections to it, then we should need to go, you'll need to just go through it and, and work with them on it. But I, I think if you're talking about legality, then I don't think, there, there is a, a legal problem, but it may well just be that, uh, I know this is unusual for me, but <laughs> it might just be just politic to to uh, to yeah. speak to them and suggest this to them. We say we want to get on with it. We can get on and do something. Um, would you be prepared to sort of uh, be uh, work with us on it? Thank you very much, Town Clerk. I, I think most of us uh, would would agree with that. Sorry, I, I can see a hand up, Rauch, Councillor Rauschenara. Yes, thank you, thank you, Chair. Yes, um, I've written to the officer who is in charge for the market a few weeks ago regarding, you know, what was happening, because we discussed about it with Madeline Homer when we had the Ramsgate Regeneration meeting, and she did say that she was going to, you know, look into it. But we didn't hear anything for so long. So I, you know, people were inquiring with me what's happening with market. So I have written to her. Then she come back to me after after two weeks, I think. Uh, anyway, saying that uh, yes, they are looking into it and they're going to start the procurement on the third of May. Uh, then I replied to her that saying, you know, this is <laughs> uh, nothing has happened until now, and uh, seems to me this will by. If you start on the 3rd of May, uh, we are not going to have a market until, you know, end of autumn or beginning of winter. It will, it, you know, it's going to... Then Madeline Homer replied to my email uh, saying that, uh, you know, because of COVID, they couldn't do it and they didn't have people uh, in place and blah, blah. So this is where we are. Uh, and therefore, I requested Eileen this afternoon to... Uh, share my email with everyone. I, I believe you you must uh, all receive it. Uh, this is uh, this is what they're saying. Uh, but I agree with our town clerk Richard uh, that we should go ahead and start um, the market at Charlotte Court, and uh, you know with obviously talking with TDC. And uh, if if TDC does uh, you know start the market in the in the future, we can run alongside it, or maybe we can do the Charlotte Court market in another day, uh, if not on Fridays. I, uh, I, but we should have a market, which is which is so important for Ramsgate, uh, for our town centre. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Wing, I've got your hand up. Yes, please, Chair. I mean, 
Rishan's done a lot of forcing on this issue and I piled in as well. And if you remember when I was early elected, I believe the market is an absolute game changer for our town. And if you look at what we've achieved up on Addington Street with one fair in 12 months, we can clearly, we can evidence the social benefit, the economic benefit to the businesses and the environmental benefit. It's pulled the community together. And I think at that council meeting i actually said let's run eight and the eighth will be on addington street let's do the same as faversham and run a, a once a month for a cant or whatever it is it would need investment from ramsgate town council my one fair costs us six thousand but the positive impact is 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 immense so i've got a number of points I backed Rashad. This is our market and our town. And I find it absolutely disrespectful that TDC are undertaking a procurement of our market without it without involving Ramsgate town councillors and, and TDC Ramsgate based councillors. I particularly have quite a lot of you know ev evidence and experience of running a market and I, I have told Madeleine Homer that I'm quite prepared to throw my weight behind a working party to ensure that we get more than just a market because this could be a game changer we could become the place that people visit for a market for all sorts of goods so I think the Charlotte Court option is a, is, a, is a really good option. And I believe we could circumnavigate TDC by filling in events paperwork. I'm quite happy to try and organise this market and, and, and having a once a month market, Brickant style in, in similar to what that we run on Addington Street that would bring in lots of people and develop a rep reputation. So I think we need to keep First of all, pressing TDC on the fact this is our town and our market and we should be part of the process. And then we should look at, uh, uh, look at trying to run our own markets on Charlotte Court on a weekly basis, but then trying to build in a once a month market that I know will bring, will, will bring lots of people in. And they're the two points I'd like to make. And, congrats, and thank you, Rashan, for battling. Thank you very much indeed. Councillor Green. RTC not being involved in the procurement was our choice, Chair. We decided that because we might eventually want to bid to run the market ourselves, that it was right that we were involved in the procurement. If that has changed, then that I'm sure TDC would be quite willing to have us involved. But Councillor Wing is quite right, this will need a budget. Um, I would suggest initially 5k uh, and that we through the town promoter and through through Becky if she wants to work with it that, that we go ahead. Are there um, any other members who want to contribute to the discussion? Okay, I think we have a proposal there from Councillor Green. We've had a, a, an excellent outline from the town clerk about the way we can incorporate this and then it can develop a life of its own in that sense and be, still be involved with TDC at a later date. Um, would, can I have a seconder for Councillor Green's proposal? I will take on that, Chair. Uh, yeah. Thank Councilor you, Ara. Councillor Ara. Um, do we do we have that, um, either town clerk or deputy town clerk, do we have the proposal written down? Chairman, it's the Deputy Town Clerk, Mr. Clark, this evening. And yes, I've got everything that was detailed in that um, resolution. Thank you. Thank yes. you very much. Members, are there any objections to the proposal as we have it? I'm not seeing any, so we'll take that as uh, consent. Um, and that also included the suggestion of the budget that was required, I think, Councillor Green. I believe that was the case, Chair. Yeah, yep, thank you very around, much yeah. for that. Um, members, then, agenda item number seven, the levelling up fund. And can I turn to you, Councillor Green, for your report, please? 
Yeah, certainly. Um, this started out as me doing something for my own satisfaction in that I, I wanted to review all the projects that, that I knew about that, that, that people wanted to do to improve Ramsgate as they saw it and um, really to prepare for any funding opportunities that came along. Then we learned that um, uh, Thanet was being included in the levelling up fund by the government, it, it being in the, the highest tranche of, of areas to qualify for the fund, and that TDC had been invited to make a bid for up to 20k, 20 million from this fund. Uh, Madeleine Homer and Rick Everett then said that in this case, because Margate had already had the town's fund money, that, that they would favour directing this £20 million towards Ramsgate. So that gave me, um, if you like, more incentive to, to complete this work that I was already working on. And the report that's been circulated to you is the result of that. You you will notice that very little of it is, is my actual work. Uh, most of it is either taken from other people's reports or from other people's proposals. I'm not suggesting that RTC endorses all these projects, but what I am asking for is for Ramsgate Town Council to adopt the report as a working document to help us when surely we will be asked to engage with the TDC's consultants around developing this bid. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Green. I'm sure I share, I'm sure uh, all members would would share what I'm about Absolutely. to say. It may well not be your original work. However, it's taken a lot of time for you to pull all this information together in a 29-page document for us to have a look at. So on behalf of the council, thank you very much for doing that. Um, I can see uh, Councillor Wing and one other, but I've got no identity. I'll come to you next. Uh, Councillor Wing, please. Jane's hand was up and hers was up before mine, so I can see it and you can't. So let Jane speak first. Okay, thank you very much for that. Councillor Hedrington? Uh, thank you. Now, I just wanted really to endorse what you said, Stuart. Thank you, David. That is a very, I mean, it might not have been a totally original, but it's extremely comprehensive. Yeah. Well, and it, I mean, I've only skimmed through it, but it covered most things that I'm interested in, and I certainly can read it again in depth, and I think it's a great. Um, you know, a starting point for us to move forward because we're very the time limited with this as well. I was quite surprised how fast this has got to be turned round. So thank you for getting us started on that. Uh, Mark, I, I would fully support it as well, but I would go one step further. I'm very unhappy that the port feasibility study has been kicked well and truly down the road. And the various groups, in particularly uh, the one group that I've linked in with quite well, uh, the, the group run by the group from Spencer Square, the port, their port and feasibility study, I think it involved 800 responses from locals and it's and they've continued to advance that 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 document, including linking up with businesses that are more than prepared to, 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 to come and engage in Ramsgate in our port and harbour. Can we approach that group and try and build into the documentation that David's had uh, and ensure that TDC listens to us? Because I am, again, really concerned that local engagement with residents is not going to happen at all. Thank you for those points. I think uh, I think they have to engage with local residents, but I'm happy to be corrected on that. Um, 
I've got your hand raised, Councillor Rosecki. Yeah, they do uh, have to engage, but they're probably yes. going to leave it at such a late date that they won't get the appropriate detail of feedback from locals that I believe they sh the consultation period will not be long enough. And I'm really concerned that the Port Feasib Feasibility Study and a great deal of time was spent by residents and groups running that up, and it's literally been ignored. Well, I... I Thank you for those comments, Councillor Rosecki. I can see your hand, but Thank can you. I just go <laughs> to, to Councillor Oldham, just Thank in you. case? Councillor Piper, can you hear me? It's uh, Councillor Rosecki. I can hear you. Can I just go past you for one second okay. to Councillor Oldham, okay. please, um, and see if there is anything he's able to address directly to the issue Councillor Wing raised of public engagement, consultation, uh, communications. Um, are, are you able to offer anything to us, Councillor Alban? Yeah, Chairman, I think Councillor Wing has gone a bit over the top. Um, you know, she has a right to go over the top. She's making a point. But at the end of the day, uh, you know, it's it's pretty much rubbish. Um, and, I'm, I'm, uh, and it, you know, I see, I, I don't mean to be disrespectful, Thank but it you, is. Thank you, Councillor Alban. I don't think I've ever regarded anything you've said as rubbish in a public meeting. So can you take that back, please? Yeah, OK, yeah, OK. I'll use the word garbage. Um, <clears throat> as far as, as far as the, as far as the um, chair, chairman, as far as the, um, the issue about the port is concerned, of course there will be full consultation and, and, and listening to um what the what our residents have to say um you know of course we're going to do that unfortunately as we all know part of the process in relation to the port and the, the feasibility study is for um was for public engagement and public engagement on a face-to-face -face basis to hear from them. That's why it's been put back until such time as, as that, that public engagement where public meetings can take place is there for, for that to, act, to actually happen. Um, so that will take place. And, um, you know, I, I know we're in, I know, <laughs> I, I do take that back, Councillor Wing. I, I, you know, what you say is not rubbish. It's You've got a point, a point of view. But it's it's. Um, it's I totally either, disagree Councilor with your Alvin. point of view. So I, I do apologise for that. So thank, um, thank you for that. Um, but I, I have to say, Chair, that uh, the point of view is unfair. Uh, in 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 that, all of the, all of the residents' views of 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 are taken in. But it is the public engagement with the with the public public meetings to take place that needs to be done in relation to the pool and in you. relation to that feasi feasibility study. Thank, thank you very much for that. It's, it is clearly a, a very hot and contentious topic. Uh, thank you both. Uh, I think most of us on Ramsgate Town Council would want TDC to act as soon as is practicable. Uh, post COVID, whatever the new normal is going to be, it is very important that the public are considered um, and their views are taken on board. Um, thank you both. Uh, Councillor Rizeki. Thank you, Chair. Um, hopefully slightly less controversial, but my understanding on this, this possible money, which is only possible at the moment, is that uh, it also might have to be shared with parts of Canterbury and Dover. I'm not sure how how much or how 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 widespread it has to be, uh, but uh, maybe it might be worth us talking to uh, Canterbury and Dover to see uh, if that is the case, and uh, if that is how how we're going to do it. Thank you very much. I think I, I'm, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I think as a council we need someone to as it were, speak for us with TDC and or any negotiations with Canterbury and, and Dover. I note, obviously, Councillor Green has put a great deal of work into this already. Um, and uh, Councillor Green, are you happy if that is determined by this council for you to continue to be the voice, uh, if I can put it that way, of RTC? Are you happy to do that for us? 
Chair, um, Chair, it's not my understanding that, that Canterbury and Dover are involved. Uh, TDC had to get uh, KCCs and our MPs buy-in okay. to make the bid, and I understand they've, they've already got that. Uh, they're in the process of uh, got a tender out for consultants in order to run the consultation that is necessary. Uh, my understanding was that the tender document said that this consultant should be prepared to start work on the 1st of May. So that's where I think Councillor Alburn may be able to correct me, but that's where I think it stands. And yes, I'm quite, I'm, I'm quite happy to take it forward, uh, provided that the council gives me permission to do so on their behalf. Thank you very much, Councillor Green. Uh, Chairman, can I come back in, Chairman? Councillor Alban. Yeah, I, I would support Councillor Green doing that. If it, if the council would support it, I would propose that. I think that's a very, a very good idea. Um, I have to say that whether or not we get 20, 20 million pound, um, I, I, I doubt the, I doubt that we would get the full, the full amount based, based on this government's um, track record so far with how much it's given Thanet. Um, however, this is, this is such an important part for our town. Um, as, as Councillor Wing said earlier, in relation to the market and stuff, you know, if we get that right, it can be so important for the town. So the foundation, the foundation we've got to we've lay got a foundation, to lay a foundation, down, foundation down, down that we require, that we for, the require for the council. And, and, and hopefully Councillor Greens uh, will, will, will take that on, on board, Chairman, and lay the foundation down for us. Thank you very much, Councillor Auburn. Um, I think obviously we we can't we couldn't as a council keep calling F and GP meetings to decide each step of this process. And my understanding is that you, Councillor Wing, have got a great deal of experience in obtaining funding from a variety of sources. Perhaps as vice chair of this committee, perhaps you could stay in regular contact with Councillor Green for developments on this, so that um, we can all be better informed. I think, I mean, my, my viewpoint on funding is I'd like to see Ramsgate Town Council take on board more assets because we are blocked from accessing funding because of TDC's failure to, to allow residents like me or other people with experience of funding bids to actually work those funding bids up. Uh, that uh, my my experience is 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 very much more trying to work those funding bids up so i i, I in, in doing the practical side of the work and i certainly think that this body needs to look at that in the future because fanit as a whole is missing out on huge pots of money some attached to postcodes that if they're not applied for they just disappear ellington park was a typical example if that bid had not been successful the third time round then that whole pot of money would have just disappeared into the ether so i certainly think for the future as a body we need to be we need to be gearing ourselves up there was four million attached to skateboard parks and we tried to engage with tdc to allow uh, us to put a bid in for the war wreck. We all we needed was a named officer, and we, all of our emails were ignored. So I certainly think that's something I would like to get involved in in the future, as a as actually practically putting bids together rather than advising on bids. Thank you very much for that. Councillor Green has kindly agreed, if we, uh, as it were, uh, give him permission to do it to carry on and see this through for us. Um, are there any members who object to that proposal? It's Councillor Green says he'll do it. Councillor Alban supports it. Can we can we give them our full support? Thank you. I'm not seeing any uh, signs to the contrary. So thank you very much for that, members, and thank you very much, Councillor Green, for the work you've done and are prepared to continue doing. Uh, agenda item number eight: Ramsgate main sands report uh to do with uh, communications received by councillor green so can i hand it over to you please councillor green yeah 
Thank you, Chair. Um, Council will know that um, through the Tampa Motion Committee, we have uh, set up an organisation called Active Ramsgate, which is designed to promote the town as a centre for activities and very successfully has, has attracted um, the attention, national attention. Um, and our flagship in terms of cre uh, creating a national interest has been the Kite Surfing Championships uh, and that we've been holding annually on Ramsgate Man Sands. Just recently then, we received a communication through um, a junior officer at TDC that we could we should no longer promote the use of Ramsgate Main Sands for kite surfing or indeed for any water sports. On investigation, this appeared to be because TDC had commissioned the RNLI to do beach safety work on all their beaches and they hadn't asked them to look at um, kite surfing or paddle boarding or whatever on Ramsgate main sands. Now this would be absolutely devastating for our active Ramsgate um, activities. I was really annoyed, as you can imagine, um, perhaps too annoyed, because I wrote rather a strong letter to um, Madeline Homer asking her what the hell was going on and how it had occurred. And that's the letter that I I put to the to you as a sort of, uh, to, A, to let you know what was going on and B, to, to hopefully that you would back me. Um, I've sub subsequently had uh, an appointment with Madeline and Gavin Waite and Ruth Duckworth, Duckworth, the cabinet member, made for me a uh, second week in May to discuss this issue. I've privately been told that TDC realised that they've screwed up and will attempt to put it right. Um, there are other, there are lots of other people involved, not least the, the people that work for kite pirates, and, and and you know their living is is lessons on kite surfing from Ramsgate Main Sands. So it's not a trivial issue in any way, a because of um, our investment, but also because of the people involved. So really, I'm looking for an endorsement from this council for my actions and to continue pursuing it. Thank you very much, Council Green members. Uh, from the chair, Councillor Green, thank you. All. I've got to Councillor Hetherington. Thank you very much, David. I agree with you. I think losing those activities on the beach, particularly coming into the summer with everything that we've lost hitherto, um, would be really detrimental to the town. Thank you very much, Councillor Hetherington. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'll second that, Councillor oh, Chair. Thank you very the much, Councillor Sorry. Yes, Me thank you, too. Councillor Rizek. Me too, uh, Councillor uh, Wing. I'd like to see us develop a dinghy sailing centre in Ramsgate as well, actually, David. So there you go. Thank you very much for those things. Councillor Ara, yes. I, note, I note the season and I note that you need to go. Yes, I do. Yes, you really want to. Yeah, thank you. No, that's, I support David as well. On this. Thank, thank you very much for taking, uh, for being here today. Thank you. Okay, bye. Um, yeah. Councillor Green. Yeah. Yes, Chair. Yeah. Uh, yes, Councillor Green. The town promoter tells me, and she'll correct me if I've got it wrong, that there's a beach in Cornwall that runs, I think it's up to 30 um, training uh, operations on the one beach that is smaller than 
Ramsgate um, main sands. So uh, I, don't, I don't know where this idea has come from um, about it not being possible on Ramsgate main sands. Um, I think the truth is that TDC just forgot to ask the RNLI to do to that a correct safety assessment. Certainly, certainly looks like it. Thank you, Councillor Green. Uh, I'll turn to over, please. Um, yes, it's just oh, to. Sorry. sorry, Steve. Did you want to? No, I just, it just. No, you go forward, Rebecca. Please. Okay. Um, you know, it's just to um, clarify the, the 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 point about the North Cornwall Beach was. It was a similar stretch of beach to Thanet, so a 27-mile coastline where they have just shy of 30 surf schools. And the point was that we only have three on our 27 miles of coastline. Um, and that was the comparison that was made. So um, apologies, David, if that wasn't clear. Thank you very much for that. Councillor Alban? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, just, just to say... Um, you know, it's difficult when you got your two hats on, as you know. Um, but it's in in relation to the kite surfers. Initially, I was uh, I was asked for my opinion with a report that was done uh, not by a junior member of staff, but by the acting dire director res re responsible, um, and shown a report in relation to the kite surfing. Uh, sorry, I forgot what they're called. Um, and um, it was in relation to health and safety issues and as to whether on, or not as a business, and I believe that they are run as a business, that's what I was advised, um, that they should pay as a concession would pay. Uh, now, that was the only reason I was given. And uh, as far as I was aware, they were awaiting the kite surfing the kite serving company to come back to them to ensure that they covered all the health and safety issues and if that if that was the case uh then uh, and and the council were happy with that then then there's no reason why they shouldn't operate from from there providing the health and safety and any uh payment if it was if any was due uh was undertaken chair thank you uh, Councillor Green, you, you ask that the committee retrospectively endorses the correspondence from the chair. My only observation would be um, the correspondence, I think, is fair. It's robust. Um, and uh, sometimes, perhaps, as a council, we need a bit of robust interaction on behalf, uh, on our behalf. Several members have already uh, said they fully support the idea. So, um, I'm quite happy to propose from the chair that we retrospectively endorse the correspondence as has been detailed above. Uh, could I have a seconder for that, please? Chair, you already had Councillor Izeki as a seconder. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I, I obviously missed that one. Thank you very much, Deputy Town Clerk. Uh, are there any objections to the council supporting Councillor Green in his activities thus far? I can't see any signs, so uh, we will uh, support, re retrospectively endorse the correspondence that has been held thus far. We look forward, of course, to working with TDC, but also to working for the benefit of our beaches and the involvement that's gradually taken, it's been taking shape over several years now, but it's, it's, it is working. And so thank you, Councillor Green, for all of that. Uh, we are... Now, I believe on agenda item nine, um, I am advised on the agenda that it says this may be taken as uh, a confidential matter, but I believe we're not about to discuss anything of a confidential nature. Um, Chair, Dean, can I? Yes, Chair. who's that? I can't hear you. Who's that, please? It's it's me, Councillor Green. Oh, Councillor Green, hello. Chair, I would be unhappy about discussing this 
uh, in in open session, and I would propose that we do move to confidential. Um, Chairman, you're talking about item nine, which is the town clerk's report. The item that I believe you're talking about uh, for confidentiality is staff matters. So if there's nothing for the town clerk's oh. report, you may move on. Thank you. I'm sorry, that is the that is the next one on my list, uh, Deputy Town Clerk, as, as things. But there is another report from the Town Clerk. Can we go to that first, please? Uh, uh, Chairman, and uh, just a, one matter. Um, that's really to be you update everybody on the transfer of Albion Gardens to Ramsgate Town Council from Planet District Council um, ownership. I've spoken to the interim director of uh, Planet District Council Estates and uh, after a, a, quite a session, we, what was agreed, um, subject to your approval, is that there would be an interim period. The, the, the matter should have been dealt with some time ago. The matter of the estate's fees and their legal fees has been resolved. As you know, it's 1,200 quid. So I have said that to him. That's all been agreed. I've said that to them several times, but they've, I've underlined that. The other thing is they've got this £25,000 for repairs for the Pulamite rock work, the artificial rock work. Um, I have checked on that and I checked with the Ramsgate Society who also got a, a COVID recovery grant at the same time. And from my understanding, there's a, uh, Historic England will require that the, the work be at least started by no later than September and should be completed no later than two months after that. Um, they are going to procurement at the moment, so I don't know. So I have encouraged them uh, in an email to, to do that. And I've suggested in the interim that Ramsgate Town Council, assuming they will issue a license, would do some of the horticultural work to keep the place ship shape in Bristol fashion, which is exactly the, what I said. In other words, we would cut the grass, edge the lawns, go into the flower beds, paint the handrails and even reset some of the handrails because some of them are wobbly and not safe um, but not do anything major on the site until such times as the handover happens and I suggested a target date of, of either uh, the end of this year or possibly April next year depending on what Historic England do because what they'll have to do is a get the work procured do the work um, and then uh, get it signed off by Historic England that way then they, they're free, home free and they can then transfer the, the site to Ramsgate Town Council um, and, and it's done and dusted. They also need to get the waterfall sorted out as well, which you, I, 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 I know is in, in, on the way. Um, so th there you have it. So it, basically I've suggested because it does need looking after now and I don't think that that's going to happen. So that we get it really, you know, from the point of view of the public, they get to see a, a well-tended lawn and well-tended flower beds and, and painted handrails. So it looks the best it can do. But all the major stuff, the, the, the repair work gets done by TDC as, as quickly as it can do. The other thing I've also suggested, I know Historic England were very keen that, that uh, staff would be um, trained in the repair of Pulamite because if you can do the small repairs from day to day, week to week, month to month, it will save a lot of repairs, heavy repairs, further on down the line. There have been no repairs in the last 20 years. And I, so I've got them to, to, to include us in a training programme. Um, that's it. Thank you very much for that, Town Clerk. Is there anything specifically this evening you would like this committee to decide or are we noting your report and comments? Well, just that you uh, support the, my comments and that uh, there can be a minute to that effect. Thank you very much for that. Uh, from the yeah. chair, yes, Councillor Green? I have one, uh, conc one concern about us taking on this task. I can remember um, seeing Justin McCarthy climbing over the, the rockery uh, mm -hmm. when he used to do it in the past and being very concerned about the health and safety issues of working on that rockery with the road below 
Um, so my concern is that we should have a proper health and safety assessment for our staff as to what precautions they should take before they start work on the actual rockery itself. Thank you, Councillor Green. Yes, I think you're right. That's eminently sensible. Is that that's something we can organise fairly quickly, Town Clerk? Yes, we also have the nifty lift, so it doesn't mean that we need to go anywhere near it. That's that's why we've got it. So um, you can we can use the nifty lift internally, and it can it can reach over and they can examine it. But they shouldn't have any need to go to the the Pulamite Rock Royal anyway, unless there is some just to look at it and then to do very. I mean, what we're talking about is not running around with heavy drills and things. It's just light work, um, and uh, and they shouldn't have need to be clambering over it at all. But and and a safe health and safety thing can be done. Thank you very much. If you could do that for us, making a note in uh, in your comments about the uh, the, nip, what did you, the nifty lift, was it? Yeah, nifty lift. Yeah. yeah. If you do that in the report, just to make sure that we're absolutely clear, as Councillor Green is suggesting, yeah. for the protection of our staff who will be involved in that. Mm. Um, so, members, um, are you happy that we? uh encourage that uh safety report to be done and for us to take care of the minor repairs for the time being until such times as it develops a life of its own and becomes ours i'm not seeing any objections. are you happy with that councillor green yes yes thank you very much members um then we can uh I don't know if endorse is the right word now, Clark, but certainly, yes, please go ahead and do that. Um, I, okay, this, this final item, uh, my understanding following a conversation with the chair of our council yesterday was that it is not likely that any uh, confidential informa information could be discussed at this point but could i turn to you now please councillor nixie is that still a position or would you rather we went uh, uh we excluded the press of the public at from this point i feel if councillor green isn't happy um it being public then i would suggest that we do go into a, a, a private closure because just in case anything does come up so rather than um not have the ability to speak about something then maybe if councillor green doesn't feel happy with that then we should go private thank you i'll start thank on you. that chair councillor thank you councillor rizeki so we have proposed by councillor green seconded by councillor rizeki that we treat the next item on the agenda as confidential uh, are there any objections from members Thank you. I'm not seeing any. 